evil is a reality. Uh, whether you want to say that there's evil or there's Satan, we know that this is a strong, strong force in our life. We can see it in the news. We can see it as we read history books and hear about people like Hitler or Stalin and just shake our head with the, the force of that happening. We hear about serial killers, people that do terrible things to others with, in their vulnerability and murder them oftentimes with torture. And we say, oh my gosh, there's evil in the world. Even the evil that comes with war, there's evil there. Well, the question comes, how do we deal with evil? First of all, I think that the important, the important struggle in our own life is admitting the fact that each of us is capable of evil. It takes a real, real humility to study evil. Each of us has, as, as Carl Jung says, he's a psychologist, he says, there's a shadow in each of us, and I know that's true. I have a ministry in prison, and I go and I'll say mass with men and women who have committed terrible, terrible crimes. And it's very easy just to say, oh, it's those people. And yet I know deep down were, were the circumstances of their life my circumstances. If the pressures were there, if the lack of love were there, uh, perhaps I would be doing the very same thing. And I know in my life that if I don't fight that shadow, I can go against the, the goodness and the kindness that, that God wants. I can turn to that evil. That's where the importance of a relationship with God comes. And that relationship with God offers us a, a direction. And that's what the Ten Commandments are, helping us to curb that shadow, curb that evil which is in our own hearts and also the need for prayer, to coming to God and saying, please, as we say in the Our Father, deliver us from evil. Get us out of those things that are so bad. God, we need you. I need first your direction, and I need your spiritual help to allow me to be a person who's really good and striving for the good and not for the evil, which is a very natural inclination. Friday of the third week of Lent. When I read through the Bible, I find an interesting aspect of God. It's the word passion. There's in God a, a thing that I relate to with passion with regard to the word emotion. There's an intensity with God, a care for his people. He's created us and then watches over us moves us, calls us with great emotion and great passion. If we could admit that fact, we get rid of that image of God kind of sitting up on a throne or up in the clouds or in the mountains and start to acknowledge the closeness of God to us with a desire to love us with intimacy and with true emotion. Uh, Jesus, who opens the door for, our, to under, for us to understand God, was a person who, especially at his death, went through a passion. Uh, we think of that, of the, the beatings that he went through, but also the passion of love that he had with reaching out to us. I'm asking you, as you think of God, to think of a little bit of that passion that you might find in, um, in a television program, and you look and you say, oh man, those, the, those men and women are passionate with one another the passion of someone who might be running for a political office and who they want that goal and they're driven for that. The passion of someone who has a vocation as a teacher and moves into a difficult situation and with real passion teaches the truth that they'd have experienced through literature or through science. Even the passion that we would find in a, in a sports arena where people are excited about their team why can't we relate that to God and allow God, the passionate God, to be so in love with us through nature and through the people that are presented to us and through the gifts of Scripture to see God reaching out and saying, I love you with the passion.